First off, I just want to say that uh, you don't need to really follow what I'm doing here because I honestly don't know what I'm doing. This is the first uh, 36 horsepower fuel pump or any fuel pump that I've done. And um, I hadn't seen any videos on YouTube that kind of shows the full process. And so, I don't know, this is how I did it. And so far it worked out. Um, I did actually two fuel pumps during this time. And so you can see me breaking this one open. Um, it was pretty corroded. These are uh, for a 1959 era Volkswagen Bug. The reason I'm even doing these is because my 59 Bug had the earlier style that doesn't have the uh, fuel filter, which I'm taking out right here. I just ended up reusing a lot of the parts that I could. Um, of course, give it a nice chemical bath and a parts cleaner. Um, get an old toothbrush and just go to town on it. So then um, you want to make sure these, the two halves are pretty plain. I just took a, not a very abrasive 3M block and kind of gently circled around and just try to make it flat and even. And just put all these little components back together. Uh, this is probably the hardest part, honestly, because of the tiny springs, as you see right here. That one's easy because you can sandwich it down with this uh, washer thing. And But then on that side, the washer goes in first and the spring kind of balances on top. It's actually pretty ridiculous. And then you gotta try to like sandwich that down. And this is the little action I did with the gasket in there, of course. The new gasket comes with the kit, the rebuild kit. And just put it all back together. So for the diaphragm spring, I just ended up using the original. Um, that's pretty much recommended what I've seen. The new springs that come in the kits are might be too long and they give you too much fuel pressure. So I would just recommend that and it worked out for me so far. Um, pushing in this diaphragm and getting that hole to line up into to catch on that lever is a little tricky, but it's really not that bad. You got to do a little kind of a push down twist action. You'll see that the lever is kind of bent actually. And I think that's so you can twist it on and off. So push it down, twist it on there. You gotta finagle with it for a little bit, but it's not too bad. Now you're supposed to put a preload on these pumps and I don't have the special tool and it's, I, this is how I did it. I just grabbed a C-clamp and a little block of wood. And the point is, is to just get that diaphragm to lay even and flat. You don't just want to just sandwich it down with the spring and then tighten the screws down because then you'll have wrinkles or waves in the diaphragm and then you'll have failure later on. You just want to make sure that that diaphragm is sitting flat and even while you're screwing down the top half. And, you know, maybe people will say I did it wrong and I should have the proper tool, but that's uh, just how I do things. And I'm, you know, whatever. It'll probably fail later, but I'll just do it again. So this is how I did it. And obviously you just uh, put all these screws back in. Just make sure you tighten these down pretty well because I actually didn't. And um, I did have slight fuel coming out of the sides. So I just had to tighten them down more and it solved the problem. And here I am just, uh, putting the fuel filter back together. And so you'll see that uh, my bug has a earlier style fuel pump. It was actually American made as well. It says made in USA on it. This one that I'm replacing is obviously the original German pump and it's the correct 59 style. And that's, that's just why I'm doing it. This pump here has been working for me just fine. But I'm trying to make my engine bay look period correct. And I like little details like that. 
I always gotta make sure you do the, uh, oh, that's, that's kind of um, sexy, isn't it? Uh, put some grease in there. And um, I used Permatex on the two gaskets that go on the pump. Who knows if that's what you're supposed to do, but it's what I had in the garage. And getting these hard fuel lines to go in nicely is probably the biggest pain in the ass for me, especially this top one. In fact, I kind of stripped the nut on, on it to tighten it down enough to where it wouldn't leak. Um, I'm going to have to replace it. I actually just got it in the mail today, so I'm going to replace that fuel line. The one on the side right there actually went in super easy, no leaks at all. But I did tighten it down enough to get it. Yeah, it's working great so far. 